I'm Neil, and I was stung by a very venomous uh, scorpion and nearly died. Uh, we were at our holiday home uh, in the bush at Inguilala. That's somewhere out the Timbavati area, east of Hoodsprate. And uh, it's a place, the place that we really love. We've been going there for close to 20 years. We'd just finished the braai on the uh, patio of our bungalow. Um, we'd put the furniture away and it was my job really to go and blow out the um, kerosene, the paraffin lamps that were around on the patio. And I got to the last one, I blew it out and almost instantaneously I felt this, this sting on my big toe. Unfortunately I was wearing sandals, open sandals, which was bad news. I stamped the ground because I knew I had something down there but I couldn't see. We have about 145 species of scorpions in Southern Africa and only two have ever caused deaths. So one's called Parabuthus granulatus, which occurs towards the western sides of the country. The other one is Parabuthus transvalicus, which is very common in the low felt where Neil got stuck. Parabuthus have very interesting lifestyles. Whereas other scorpion species wait for prey to wander past them, Parabuthus are very, very different. They actively forage for prey, so they're moving around in the environment a lot. If you have a look where the scorpion was, it was underneath one of his lights. And insects will be attracted to the light and then they'll fall onto the ground. So that scorpion was actually eating insects that were attracted, attracted by the light. I want you to imagine that you've got a coal and it's a red hot coal outside and near your bra and you don't have any shoes on. And I put my foot on that red hot coal. That pain, like an electric current, uh, en entered my body. And, and, and it ran up my leg and within a, a short space of time I realized that this, this uh, venom was actually moving very fast throughout my body. Encounters with scorpions is purely random in most cases. If you stand on a scorpion, it's a life and death situation for that scorpion. And what the scorpion tries to do, it tries to defend itself in the best way it can. And the best way it can is going to be using its venom. All scorpions have got neurotoxic venom. And what the venom does, it, 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 it works on your nervous system in two different ways. Either it excites the nervous system, and that explains the intense localized pain, or they actually suppress the nervous system, which also explains why people become paralyzed. And one of the big things about neurotoxic venom, or the big causes of death from neurotoxic venom, and that includes snakes as well, is going to be respiratory failure. My wife Pam was inside washing the dishes. Uh, I, I screamed and uh, ran inside and then she got, wanted to know what had happened. She thought maybe a snake had, had bitten me or maybe worse. I ran straight to the bathroom, put my toe into the wash basin, put, turned the tap on and tried as much as I could to squeeze the venom out of where this thing was. The, uh, the pain uh, increased uh, dramatically over the next few minutes. Many people speak about trying to use cold water and trying to use hot water. And the idea behind that is that it actually denatures the proteins inside the venom. But you must understand that your foot is also made of proteins. So if you put your foot, which is, which is intensely painful, if you try to apply any kind of hot water to that, you're just going to increase the pain tenfold. Rubbing anything on the outside of your skin is not going to help. You remember that once that venom goes into your body, there's nothing you can rub on the outside that can have any kind of effect. I then got hold of the two-way radio and called the, uh, the first aid lady on duty. She said, look, within 10 minutes, if it doesn't die down, if this thing doesn't die down, you'd better get yourself to hospital. And within minutes, I took the decision that uh, this was nothing um, that we could play around with. Um, we really needed to get to hospital. We drove as fast as we could uh, towards uh, Palaboa where the hospital is and along the road um, on this tar road the speed limit was 50 kilometers an hour. And off I went at 50 and he was still compass mentis enough to say to me you're gonna have to step on this a bit you're gonna have to get there faster because I can feel the pins and needles are, are moving. Get into the middle of the road and put the lights on bright and put your foot down. And we saw you know, the usual nocturnal creatures, ra rabbits, animals, insects crossing the road. And I did, but I, I was very, very conscious of what could jump out at any moment, and it so happened the elephants were there. Pam um, put her foot straight in the brake and fortunately held, held her line, 
but it was a choice of marula trees on the left or otherwise elephants on the right. She blew the hoot there as well and the elephants unbelievably, it was just like a miracle how fast those elephants could actually uh, move and get off the road. There was a trumpeting that went on as well. I just didn't know whether I was actually losing it or not. Uh, my eyelids were getting uh, kind of heavy and I, I felt like shutting my eyes. And I, I tried to speak to Pam. She, every now and then she'd say, are you still with us? Um, I heard her saying this. And I tried to nod my head and I tried to speak to her, but I felt as if I was actually uh, on my way out. In his responses to what I was saying, um, and his, the slurring of his speech, I could tell that he was deteriorating. And after 40 years of marriage, I, I felt like saying to her that, uh, I'm, I'm so sorry, but I love you, and just please remember that I always will love you. At that stage, I didn't know if I was going to die or not, but I couldn't come out with that, those words. OK, it's important to transport the person to professional medical help as soon as possible, and Pam and Neil did 100% the right thing in their case. Yeah, so when we arrived at the hospital, um, I don't remember too much about what actually happened, but I was told that I was wheel wheeled into the hospital. He was writhing in pain. He was agonising on the gurney there, and um, the staff were trying to comfort him and calm him and tell him it was necessary for them to do what they were doing, and he was resisting as much as he could. I just thought they were going to give him an injection and send us home. I've been stung by scorpions many times and I can tell you, if you even try and touch the area where you were stung, it's incredibly sensitive and it increases the pain a hundredfold. And they checked my vital signs. My blood pressure was sky high, 187 over 139. I was told that I was like in, in a coma for a, a day and a half or so before I actually came around and smiled and recognised the people around me. Okay, there's three main things when we talk about class three stings. There's going to be respiratory distress, there's going to be cardiac distress, and there's what we call paralysis. That is the venom affecting the communication of the nerves within your body. Scorpions have been around for about 420 million years. They've had a lot of opportunity to adapt. And of course, venom is just one of these amazing adaptations that these animals have. Scorpions with small pincers have thick tails and those are the more venomous ones. And if you really think about it like this, it has to use its venom in order to immobilize prey. On the other hand, we've got scorpions with very large pincers and very, very thin tails. And those are the very shy ones. And they catch prey by crushing their prey to death using the strength of their pincers. Uh, when I was discharged, I couldn't walk. Uh, I couldn't, uh, my muscles, even my, my arms, I couldn't use any of the muscles. My eyes were still very, uh, very, very heavy when they put me into the car. He really looked like a, a very weak, sick old man. He, he seemed to have aged 10 years. It took me probably 10 days before I could shower without pain. Even then, I, I could feel the water dripping on my head, but it was painful up there. So shaving was totally out of the question. I couldn't, I couldn't shave. My doctor said that this recovery could take uh, up to five weeks. Basically what he said is that my body had taken a huge blow and that it needed time for recovery. Okay, if you don't get antivit and that, what that means is that you have a much longer stay uh, within the medical facility. We have got some of the best antivenom in the world. It is made by the South African vaccine producers, which is up in Johannesburg. Okay, it's freely available. It's reasonably priced. You need one vial, which is about five milliliters, to treat a, a really serious uh, scorpion sting, as in the case of uh, Parabuthus transvalicus. In extreme cases, we need two vials. Normally, the antivenom will be stocked by the local hospital, but you can go to the South African vaccine producers and you can actually buy a vial of antivenom there and then. How do I feel about scorpions today? Uh, well, Firstly, you've got to take precautions. For example, we now normally wear covered shoes at night. I enjoy these venomous animals because they've got such a reputation. But if you start to look a little bit deeper into them, they are, they've, they've got lifestyles. Scorpions glow in the dark under UV lights. They live in the most, in the driest areas. And it's awe-inspiring to see that such a small creature like that has venom that is so powerful that can, it, can have, it can inflict huge trauma upon the human body. And that to me is, is absolutely astounding. We love nature and, and I certainly, if I saw a scorpion, I wouldn't want to kill it. I, I'd actually want to move around it and let it get on with its life. That's me.